We're starting to get some numbers in, and we are high on the high side, four tenths of a percent for both the headline and the core on a month over month basis. That pushes the year over year number from 3.2 percent to 3.5 percent for the headline. And for the core, we go to 3.7 from 3. I'm sorry, we go to 3.8 from 3.8. So no change there. So a disappointing result in terms of the headline numbers. We'll take a quick look and see uh, what we can find in terms of what. What pushed the numbers up? Uh, food prices were not a, a problem, up just a tenth. Gasoline up 1.7%, uh, so that's not a major issue. Uh, and then we always want to check the used cars and trucks. They fell by 1.1%, so there's something else in here that is pushing it up. It looks like shelter costs unchanged, basically up four tenths of a percent. So I'll take a deeper dive into this and see if we can find out what what the problem was. I don't even need to go through the markets, Mike. You can guess. Another bump in the road, really. Equity futures on the S&P 500, negative 0.9%. We're down across the board. On the Nasdaq, we're down by more than one full percentage point. The rough sort of small caps negative by more than two. Turn the page. Get to the bond market. At the front end, yields up by 12 basis points. New highs for the year on a two-year yield, 4 87. On a 10 year right now, up 10 or 11 basis points to 446.84. With yields higher, you can imagine the dollar stronger. It is against the euro. Switch up the board and look at the euro. Against the dollar at the moment, 108.06 with negative 0.5%. So equities down, yields up, dollar stronger. Mike McKee, are they going to call this another bump in the road? How long before we start calling it new terrain? Well, you know, you're going to have the people like Raphael Bostic talking that way, maybe Chris Waller as well, because they were already concerned that inflation hadn't started to go down uh, or hadn't continued to go down as they were expecting it to. And now this CPI seems a little bit worrisome because it continues a trend of the past two months. There was a thought that maybe January was an outlier, maybe February was an outlier, but now you've got three months and I think uh, people are going to start to say that is definitely a trend. Which really raises the question, how much are we going to start to move toward the Raphael Bostic view of the world, as well as uh, the Neil Kashkari view of the world of just cutting once this year? And that having sort of the message be, OK, we might go uh, before the election season, but don't expect us to have to move again. Well, that's going to be a tricky thing for them to pull off because it gives too much of a, a timing to it and they don't want to bring the election into it. They will say, I don't think anybody's going to change their public view on how many cuts this year uh, or to go to none between now and May 1st because it's coming up fairly quickly and we will get two more reports before the June meeting. But they might start dialing back this number and markets are certainly going to start pricing in a two cut year rather than a three cut year. We get another month of this. They'll probably go down to one cut. But to say when would probably put them in dangerous territory. They don't want to A, give the markets too much of a hint and B, bring politics into it at all.